and he got diagnosed 11 days before his first birthday with Angelman syndrome and it affects him mentally and physically. Um, he's still wheelchair bound. He's nonverbal, but he does communicate in his own way with body language and grunting and smiles and um, it does cause a lot of seizures and sleep problems. So he, he has a hard time sleeping. He'll be up for days at a time. And then when that happens, he doesn't want to do anything. So he's no help with his body weight. He doesn't want to eat, he doesn't want to bathe, he just wants to sleep during the day when he can. Um, so they think he started regressing because of increased seizure activity, which typically happens when they start to get a little more hormonal because of puberty and stuff. And so the last, I would say close to three years now, he's kind of just, the seizure activity has started peaking, which caused problems with the sleeping, which caused problems with just everything during the day. He wouldn't do his therapies anymore. So stuff he was helping with like weight bearing and weight transferring and all that stuff. He just kind of lost the ability to, he started gaining more weight and losing a lot of his muscle tone because of it. And he just became, it became harder to take care of him because it just, he couldn't help with nothing. Like he wants to, but he just couldn't. And then he can't talk to us to express it so things just really went downhill the last couple of years and um it just it's been a struggle for our family but I think we're we're make, taking the right steps to get him back to where he needs to be he's starting to stand again which he's starting to regain that ability and hopefully we get past all of his regressions and then some within the next couple of years this project is going to change so many things for our family on just a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's going to make it so much easier just to get him washed with an accessible cordless shower. It's going to make it so much easier to give him a room where we can get all of his equipment, his walker, his wheelchair, his stander, his therapy equipment, just a safer place for him to do these things, get around. And just it's gonna help the family breathe a little bit knowing like we could have caregivers come into the home and do these things so one of the hardest things right now is finding someone to do respite care for us because our home isn't accessible for him so it's a danger to them so then we can't get respite care even for a date night which is really rough um but now that the home's gonna be accessible, it will open so much more respite care, so much more therapy and sensory play for him. We could set up in his room, adaptive room, adaptive bathroom, make it that much easier on his daily living activities, mm -hmm. make it so much easier on us as the parents, his siblings, be easier for them to help because they're always trying to help, but it's hard for them. So I'm really hoping, I think it's going to be a life changer for us. I really do.